Hello everybody. Welcome to Streambox Essentials number 10. Um, it's been a while since I put out anything, mainly because we had Salem Horror Fest uh, about a week ago, half ago. Let's go. Man, I don't even know. Time has been crazy. I think it's been about two weeks. Um, and <clears throat> we put out a couple of interviews last week. Um, this week, I'm a bit behind because I have the live show that I am doing beginning of June, which for anybody who is listening to this and you don't know anything about it, before we jump into uh, the movies I picked today, talk about on Screenbox, is that I am hosting a live movie event um, that's going to be a three-hour event in Cinema Salem in Salem, Massachusetts, um, about right where I live. I live about 45 minutes hour away from there and it's uh it'll be an awesome event i'm going to be showing a movie called sweet relief that um i am actually in i have a very small part in it but i am doing this as a way of me getting myself into doing live movie hosting something i've always wanted to do and i wanted to be kind of an extension of the podcast so um we're going to be doing a meet and greet there and i'm going to be having posters um like special made posters from an actual like really good artist for everybody who comes to the event. We have about 150 tickets to sell. Um, I'm not planning on selling all of them, but if we do, that would be absolutely awesome. Um, so for anybody who is in the area, I will be leaving the ticket links down below um, where you can just uh, find them on our socials. But it's going to be a movie called Sweet Relief uh, by director and writer Nick Verde, who is a very local movie director here for anybody who has attended Salem Horror Fest in the past. He did a movie called Caucasoid. So this is his second full-length feature. And to open up the show, uh, we are having a short uh, be um, our opener that will be done. That is made by Alex DiVincenzo, who does a lot of work with Screenbox and Bright Rags, a horror fan. So it's his short reverberance which is going to be absolutely awesome i love the short so much and i think it's a great fit for um the movie that we're going to be doing so after we did the movie and the meet and greet and all that stuff we're just going to be a live q a slash interview that's going to be recorded for the podcast um and it's going to be absolutely awesome three hour event packed with awesome shit and uh for anybody who is in surrounding areas or anybody who wants to travel you want to come hang out with me and a bunch of awesome people it's going to be a great time um but enough of our self promotion over here um we're here to talk about two movies that i watched over the last um couple weeks um and i'm wanting to do a screen box essential picks for these uh one is a new one that just came out that is a screen box original called the ancestral and another film that dropped on there about a month ago called Timber Falls. That's from the early 2000s. Uh, it's a movie I haven't seen, but I got drawn to it because of the cover and they were talking about it on socials. And I was like, I got to watch this movie. So I watched it um, and I, I, I enjoyed both of these films. They're two completely different films. One's like a almost like a slasher slash like religious crazy film. <laughs> And the ancestral is a Vietnamese uh, supernatural kind of um, psychological horror that I I love so much. Um, so first, we're going to talk about uh, Timber Falls. So let me read you uh, what they have here for uh, synops. A weekend of camping in the mountains becomes an excursion into hell where young couple become pawns in a grotesque plot hatched by deranged local. Yeah, that that really sums it up. It's crazy. Um, there's these... Like, there are a couple, but that, I guess they've been together for a while. Um, like, you get some background on some of these um, characters that are in this film, and um, you kind of get thrown into things very, very quickly. And I like that about films that can throw you into something really quickly and, and make you feel like you know everything that's going on. Um, so you have a couple, Mike and Cheryl, who go 
on his camping trip, essentially, you know, be with themselves and to get away from work and whatnot and just kind of enjoy a little bit of time together. <clears throat> so they, you know, go to uh, the ranger um, station before they go off and they ask, hey, where can we go? What's the area like? Um, we want to go see some beautiful views, but we also want to, you know, have some time by ourselves. So, you know, they get a spiel, they get a little map, and they um, they meet some interesting characters along the way. Um, and there's a night where they have sex, and then you kind of get this vibe early on that there's something off about this place. Something's off about some of the characters that they're they're um they're meeting, especially from the opening bit. You can tell that this place is not very safe. <laughs> and when you also look at the um the poster for this film, it's what really draws me to it because the character that's in the back, like he has this awesome sickle sword thing that he has, and he's got this awesome trench coat, and you can tell his face is messed up. And and I get drawn to, um characters that are a little off uh, especially when they're presented in posters and stuff like that so you do get introduced to him and his name is um deacon and then you get introduced to Clyde and um Ida and there's a bunch of other characters that you get introduced to throughout the way um and as you know Mike and Cheryl are going on this trip and finding places to go they bump into Clyde who is a ranger, and you know, they ask him, hey, where's a good spot to go? We heard that there's like a good, you know, waterfalls and, and stuff like that. We want to go to a nice area so we can uh, put our tent down and, and, you know, relax for the night. So he kind of lets them know where they can go, blah, 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 blah. So they go there, and they have sex, and um, things start happening, and they get captured. Um I'm not going to go into too much detail, as everybody knows that this this series is for me to get you introduced to these films and why I think they're essential. So, why I think this movie is essential is because for an early 2000s film, the writing, the cinematography, the effects that are used in this, even though there is a little bit of CGI that is used, but a lot of it you can tell is practical, and it is really good they don't go too heavy on anything um the surrounding area is beautiful it's all on the mountain or if it's or it's in like a an underground area that's really really cool and just overall everything is really really cool and well done in this film i think even acting for early 2000s film is really really good um so go go watch this one if you if you want to find something on the site and you're looking for something that you can just kind of lay back and enjoy the ride this is definitely one there's not a lot of thinking going on you're not really trying to have to guess like who's doing this who's doing that or what's happening you kind of you get the gist of it pretty much right away um so go please go hunt this one down for an early 2000s film great and on rotten tomatoes let me see if it has a score um because sometimes when you do these ones they don't um, it does. So tomato meter, it's thirty eight percent. Audience score is twenty eight percent. Um there's only eight critic scores on this. Which I can I guess I can understand. I don't know if this was like maybe a straight to video uh movie when it came out. I doubt this got a, a theatrical release, but maybe it did in certain areas. Um I never heard of this film until Screenbox grabbed it. So go check out Timber Falls. Um and then for our next film that's complete like 360 from this film is the ancestral and this movie i think it, it's definitely getting up there with some some of the other films i've seen this year that i am in love with um so the plot for this one is a vietnamese family moves into a centuries old ancestral home only to discover sinister secrets and visions in the old family's ancient crypt um, and it even it goes further. After suffering a family tragedy, it would were named um, Thawne moves his two daughters into a centuries-old ancestral home. Both daughters fall prey to sleep paralysis and night terrors. Their fa uh, father seeks to help of a local psychiatrist by but chilling secrets and visions eventually 
prove that all is not what it seems in the old family house. Um, this movie is beautiful. It is so beautiful. The acting is so good and it's so haunting. There's this there's something about foreign films that are that are in the surrounding areas, um, you know, from like Japan and um Vietnam and anything like this that their way of storytelling, their way of film uh filmmaking, their way of doing certain things is so beautiful and so haunting when it comes to horror. There's a something that us over here in America, we can't tap into for some reason. We can't we don't know what they're doing or how they do it or whatever it may be. But there's so many great moments in this. It's really focused on the two girls and the father. And then you find out that their their mother also was prey to this sleep paralysis and um the father brought them there because the younger daughter is having it really bad. So he, he figured if we get away and we go to this one place, we can we can overcome it. We can get back as a family. And then he starts having to do sessions because things are happening with him. There's this demon that's going out about the house during the day, during night, when they're sleeping. There's like a really cool twist to this film um, that I'm not going to spoil at all. If there is one thing I can say, I guess not really negative, but one thing that I wasn't too fond of was how they kind of ended the film because of all the events that they go through and whatnot. I think the ending could have been done a little bit better, but that's just just me. Um, it's very good. There's a lot of a lot of crazy things that happen. Um, the the older um, daughter has to essentially look after the younger daughter because the father's always saying, "You are the younger. I mean, you're the, you're the oldest. You need to watch out for her. You, she, you need to do everything for her. Like you need to give her essentially your life. So it's all, you know, giving a lot of stuff for. Um, I think her name is. Uh, is it? I forget which one. Uh, Lena or Yen, I forget. But um, yeah, there's just this big, um, big overwhelming uh, pressure for her to take care of her sister and also to take care of the father. Because you get a lot of flashbacks of when the mother was around and the older daughter was doing things for her and being taught, like, you need to take care of them, you need to make dinner. You need to clean up you need to do all this stuff so you can see how it is i guess in their culture i guess that's kind of how how it still is maybe i'm not 100 percent sure how how it is over there but you can tell that there's a, a lot going on for her and feel really bad for the younger sister because of what she's going through and what she's seeing and also that the, the other daughter is now seeing these things too and that no one's believing her there's just a lot of like what is going on in this film. You don't really get like whiplash or anything like that, but you are constantly thinking like, what's going on? Are they going to be okay? What's going to happen in the end? What's happening next? So you are constantly asking yourself that, and then when you get to this this one point in the film, and you know exactly what I'm talking about when you see it, you're like, oh, I guess this kind of makes sense now. It's still kind of crazy, and you're still thinking that you are crazy for thinking the things that you're thinking and also what she's seeing, but you're not. <laughs> um, it's a really, really good film. Uh, let me go to Rotten Tomatoes for this one. I don't know if there's a score because it's out. Um, there is no scores. There's three reviews um, critically and less than 50 audience reviews in there. Uh, really, really good. It's really, really good. Um, so please go check out both these films, Timber Falls and The Ancestral. And as always, I like to give you guys my thoughts on how you should watch this. I think you should start with Timber Falls. You kind of get yourself 
warmed up a little bit to want to watch some films because the movie is it's pretty laid back. There's not a lot of um, thinking involved, and it's really cool effects that are in it. So I'd say Timber Falls, and then end it with Ancestral for a huge, a huge like overwhelming amount of sensations that you're getting from this because that's what I got. I was I was on the edge of my seat. I was actually very sad at some points. I was wanting more. I really wanted more from this. Um, and you kind of got what you, at least what I was like, expecting to get from this film. And um, I really, really want more films like this. So if we can get more sleep paralysis um, genre, I guess, of horror, that would be fucking awesome. Because you don't, there's not a lot out there. There's like a documentary, I think, that's out there in sleep paralysis. And there might be a couple other movies that um, tackle the sleep paralysis demons. These two films, The Falls, Ancestral, go check them out. Screenbox is amazing. Um, once again, guys, I'm sorry that our episodes have been kind of sparse lately, kind of spread out. It's just because there's a lot of things going on in the background with the um, the event that I'm doing. Um, there's some really cool episodes that I'm planning out right now as well. And Dean is also extremely busy. He's got... I think this week and next week, he's got a total of like three or four events that he's planning for. Um, so he's not going to be in a lot of episodes until after that. It's going to be me. I'm going to get some more other guests on here. And next week, we'll be giving you guys some more interviews. I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. So if you guys are interested in the live show that I'm doing, links will be down below. The screen box link will be down below as well for anybody who wants to sign up. Great platform. Great community over there, too. And um, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one.